the I model is pretty easy to analyze without MATLAB. It's just exponential growth. Uh, the SI model, um, you saw the derivation um, mathematically. Uh, it's fairly complicated um, to solve that differential equation. Um, the derivation went on for a couple of pages. Um, so the, the MATLAB model was probably easier to write um, than to go through the process of solving that problem. Um, with SIR, it will become even more complicated to try to solve the differential equations. So we're going to skip that altogether and we're just going to numerically model the SIR situation. So let's turn to MATLAB. Um, hopefully you have your MATLAB pulled up. If not, pay close attention and um, you will um, be able to use the printout of the code um, to update your MATLAB after this. So first of all, we are no longer working. Go right to the top of your code. You'll want to pull up your SI model. Pause the video if you don't have that pulled up and do so now. You'll want to change that to the SIR model. So we have state variables S, I, and R. Okay, so um, let's just go through the parameters, make sure we have the same numbers. Um, I, let's just start with the initial infected percentage or proportion. Actually, this is a proportion um, is 0 0.001, so 0.1% of the population. Actually, let's throw one more zero in there because if you have a large population, the starting um, I naught value is probably going to be a very small percentage of that population. So you could do that, or just to get used to scientific notation, there's one, two, three zeros in front of that. We could move the decimal place one more to make that um, one e to the negative four. So just get good, used to using scientific notation when you have very small numbers. Um, the, we'll stick with a equals 1.1 for now. Um, T max will we'll go out to 15 weeks and see what happens. And we have, um, oh, and I need to be careful here. I've started playing around with this. I'm changing the code. I need to save this first. Bad habit. If you start rewriting the code before saving it, um, you will have um, make changes to what was the old code. So I want to keep the SI code untouched. So I need to change this to the SIR model and save that. So hopefully those other, the few changes we've made so far did not go into my SI model. If so, I'll have to get rid of those. Um, so we have a T max is um, 15. We'll keep that DT. We'll keep all of those things. I max, obviously we can't go over 100% of the population. So 1.1 is good for um, I max, which we'll use for the top of our graph. Uh, remember we had three plot choices in the last code. We could plot S. We could plot I, or we could plot all of them. Let's move all of them out to choice four. Let's make choice three, since it's the SIR model. Let's be able to plot the number who have recovered. And then we might want to have a graph where we can plot all of them at once. All right, we might need to get some more colors out to make that happen. Um, so continuing. Uh, the time vectors look good. We zeroed out the, inf the I. We zeroed out the S. Let's label that. I was a little sloppy about that the last time we were coding. Um, this will be our, that's the infection vector or infected vector or infectious. Um, this will be the susceptible vector. And we're going to need to add in a removed vector. If you want to be optimistic, you can say recovered vector. Um, but there are optimistic ways and less optimistic ways to remove people. Um, so we'll call it um, the removed vector. OK. And um, once again, we'll want to start our in infection amount to be the initial amount set in the parameters. All right, so now we're down to the calculations part of the code, and we're going to see this is going to be fairly easy. All right, um, so S of IT equals 1 minus I of IT. Remember now we have one more category 
um, the removed category. So this is just a um, reordering of the equation that s plus i plus r equals one. So s equals one minus i minus r. And we're gonna, for each um, time through the loop, each time step, we're going to wanna recalculate that s value. Uh, right now, r of one is zero, which is fine. We don't need to set that because no one will have recovered yet. Um, I of it, the first one was set. So this will work the first time through the loop for s. Um, now we have di. Now in the code, I should just highlight this. Whenever I say di, um, I can't write di dt, but this really means di dt. Uh, this was a times i times s. But remember, now we have to subtract b times r. I'm sorry, not b times r of it. Um, we're going to be sending people over to the removed pool, um, and they're coming out of the infected pool based on this parameter b, which means we better add b to our parameters. I realize we don't have a b yet. So right after a, we better have a b value. Uh, let's make our b value be 0 0.5. We'll see what happens with that. Um, that would be the, um, let's call that the removal coefficient. Okay, it will also be in weeks to the negative one. All right, um, and our a coefficient, um, we should call that, now since we have two coefficients, we should call that the infection, I'll call it INF coefficient. I'll even say INF coef. So for coefficient, and I should put an E into removal. Okay, so we just put our coefficient back in. I should have realized that before we got down to this part of the code. So make sure you have B in your parameters now. And let's make sure, well, it looks like we have, oh, you know what? I have a little squiggly under my equal sign and that's because I put a comma instead of a semicolon. There we go, that cleaned it up. So moving along, um, we have di correct now. Um, we, we are now using s equals one minus i minus r. So we have s figured out. Um, we have this step here where we add the didt times the time step size. Um, so we're adding uh, the second part, this part of the um, line 28 is how many new infections we have. Um, we're gonna add that on to what we already had. Um, now recall didt at some point will actually become negative. So we'll be taking away from the infections that we already had. But we need to do a similar thing. We have S, I, and R. We can only use them adding to one for one of those. And we've already have used that for S. So we need to have a DR. So we can use the differential equation for DR, DT from our last video, which was simply that we're adding on B times I. So in this case, it'll be I of IT, the individual um, value of I for this time through the loop. So that's how many, um, what proportion of people we're gonna add into the removed um, category per unit of time, which will be per week. Um, but then to get the R value, R of, I guess we'll wanna calculate the next one, R of IT plus one should equal what R of IT was. So we're gonna add on to the number of people that are already in the recovery pool. Um, we're going to add on the, the dr, that's really dr dt, times the size of the time step. So we have a lot of little time steps, so we're going to add that on. Okay, uh, now we, again, below the loop, we want to keep this because we didn't calculate the last s value. We saw in the last video that um, caused our graph to drop uh, all the way down to zero at the end, uh, which it shouldn't. So we want to now be able to plot, okay? So let's see if our cases are working. So case one, 
see if we have to make any changes. So the susceptible population, if we run this, we have an error. Let's analyze what the error is. Okay, so the subscript indices must be, ah, I see it right here. I have I of T, not I of IT. So in line 27, let's jump over there. It's just a typing mistake. Those are what most mistakes are. That's what we're going to do. Uh, put an IT in and let's run that again. And it seems to work except that it jumps up at the very end. Ah, and I know why. We have S equals one minus I, but we forgot to take account of the, um, the removed pool. So let's do R of MT. And now the susceptible population um, should work. Ah, sorry, good, it doesn't jump up here at the end. Um, it looks like a nice continuous curve with no, um, nothing quirky happening at the end there. Uh, so it looks like our susceptible graph is working. All right, um, it's dropping off with time and you can see it for a long time, uh, we must not be getting too many infections because the susceptible population stays fairly constant. Um, and then it's dropping off. Hopefully, um, those susceptibles are moving into the remove pool. So let's see, does case two work? That, that is plot choice two. That's for I. Let's see what happens there. Ooh, something interesting is happening. I think this would be more interesting if we could look at it over a longer period of time. Okay, so let's look at that at, over, let's instead of doing, 15 weeks, uh, let's look at a year, 52 weeks. Ah, so you can see this is much more hopeful, all right? Um, and remember when we were doing logistic growth, our curve went all the way up to one. And um, so everyone was infected, all right? Now, if we look at this curve, um, it looks like we never have more than 20% of the population being infected. Our peak is right around here. Um, in fact, we could find out what is the max of I. Take that into the command window. It looks like about 18%, 18 to 19% of the population is the most that will experience this. Now that's still about one in five people, right? And now remember, people are flowing in and out of the infected pool. So it means a lot more than 18% end up getting sick. Um, the question is, do 100% of the people need to get sick or not? So let's explore a little bit further. I am suspicious that um, I think they will have to get sick, okay, because we have a one-way trip from the S pool to the I pool to the recovered pool. So as long as there is anyone who's infected, we will keep infecting people in the S pool. So I suspect that if we integrate this, we'll end up seeing that the entire population at some point was sick. Um, but not all at the same time, uh, so that's a good thing. In fact, let's play around with this a little bit. If we can remove people faster, let's move this B value up to 0. 0.6, you can see we flatten the curve a little bit, all right? Um, so what are ways we could remove people faster and um, possibly give them good medical treatment, right? So if they, uh, well, in the case of death, we could remove them faster. Um, by not giving them good medical treatment, um, but hopefully um, we're removing them into the uh, immune pool by giving them good medical treatment, all right? Um, another way, let's make that B value smaller, and we'll see, I'll go down to 0.3, or actually let's go down to 0.1 and see what happens. So they go down to 0.1, wow, look at that. There's going to be a point in time where more people are sick than not. It looks like about, you know, close to 70% of the population has to get sick, right? But B isn't the only thing, that's, that's the coefficient that determines how quickly we could remove people um, from the infected pool. Better medical treatment could raise that, poorer medical treatment might lower that, um, but remember lowering A is a good thing. So let's take this down to 0 0.8. So if I lower the A value, sure enough, um, that flattened the curve a little bit. Now, at most 60% of the people will be sick at a time. 
Um, let's take A down further. So from 0 0.8 to 0 0.5. Let's see what happens. We further flatten the curve. Notice, too, the peak happens much later in time. Okay, so we have more time to get ready for it. Um, and the peak is not as high, so we never have more than about 45%, maybe 50% of the population um, getting sick. Still pretty bad. Um, but by lowering that A value, um, we're pushing the, the peak further out in time and uh, we're lowering the peak. Let's go down to point three and see what happens. Look at that, the peak is pushed out to just about a year. Um, let's see what happens if we have that peak. Let's stretch out to um, about 80 weeks and see what happens. So 52 weeks you have, right? The peak is just before a year is up. And you can see now we're down to about 30% of the population um, being infected at one time. So we had a lot of time to get ready for it. Um, and we were able to, and the a number will be less. Let's take A all the way down to 0.1 to see what happens here. And let's be optimistic. Let's say we get better medical treatment for sick people and we um, push that A out with good social distancing practices. Wow, that almost completely flattened the curve. So by pushing, you know, by lowering A and raising B a little bit, um, we were able to completely flatten the curve. That's what our local experts are, you know, our, our government officials are trying to do, and that's what the health in, um, you know, experts are saying we need to do. We need to lower A and raise B in order to flatten the curve. Now let's bring these back again because we want to be able to see that curve. Let me put A back up to uh, 0.8. And we have a curve that we can see. We can take our time. That puts us well under a year when everybody's getting sick. So we'll go back to a year for our graph. Um, now plot choice three is supposed to be R, but it won't be yet. We'll see what plot choice three is. Oh, that gives us S and I versus time. Um, so that's not so helpful. Um, so let's, um, we need to make that plot choice four and we need to slip in a plot choice three for the R. Okay, so let us just go down to our cases. We're gonna wanna push the, that's the SI curve. We'll wanna need to add R to it, um, but we're gonna push that to case four. Make my coding window bigger again. And let's take what we had um, for the case two. So I'm gonna start copying right here. Let's take all of that. and paste it again. And you can see we want to make this case three. And now instead of plotting, um, so this will be the R values, not the I values. So we're going to want to edit. Start right here at the plot statement. We don't want that to be I, we want that to be R, okay? We're not going to want it to be red. We've already used red, okay? So let's pick another color. Okay, let's start for now with just, um, let's use M. I believe that's magenta. Okay, so we'll put an M in there. Um, we do want to go from zero to T max, and we can go from zero to I max still. We want the grids to be on. The X label looks great. The Y label is not the proportion infected. We're now working with R, so this is the recover or actually removed, removed. Okay, hopefully because they've recovered and are now immune, all right? Um, and then this would be the proportion of removed people over time, all right? Uh, we know you said the case three were indented like case the other cases. And now if we run case three, we are. Oh, let me just pull this back up. You can pause if you didn't catch up on putting in case three. Feel free to pause at any time if you need to catch up in typing code. Now we'll run it with plot choice three. And when we do that, 
we can see that our recovered population is growing. It looks a little like the logistic curve, all right? It is growing. Um, and you can see that it's approaching one, okay? Now that's good news and bad news. It means that almost everyone is immune in our optimistic scenario. Um, the bad news is that meant everyone had to go from S to I to R, okay? So everyone did get sick, but they recovered, okay? So it's a much better um, scenario than what we had before. Now we need plot choice four. Right now, plot choice four is going to look like it did in the last program. We don't have the R curve in there. So we need to go down to plot choice four and we need to add R to it. We can do that similarly to what we did before. Let me just add another line. So we will want to plot the T values and the R values. And we've already said we're going to use magenta for that. And that should add the R in. Keep on reading down. Everything is good until we get to the Y label. We want to make this S, comma, I, and R. Okay, and the title needs to have S, comma, I, and R versus the time in weeks. Okay, so let's see if those changes. So we made a couple of changes in here. Let's see if those changes work. Voila, we have all of the curves. They're all there. Um, and we can see um, at first, everyone starts out being susceptible. More and more of them get infected in the middle of this. All right. Um, but over time, those infected people are becoming immune, hopefully, and going to the removed curve. And so we have all of those curves there. And um, we have a working graph now. Okay, this is great. Um, let's just go back quickly and make sure we don't miss the big picture. The big picture is this calculation section. Okay, what's really important here for the model, this little bit of code in the for loop is the model. This is really, this is the engine driving it all, all right? So just like in the last one, okay, the important parts of this code are this line right here. That's driving, that's determining what the infection rates will look like. So simply adding the minus B I times I made the curve go up and come down rather than go up um, and then logistically level out um, at, the, at a one a value of one, it now goes up and comes down again. Um, and then we needed to add this line of code um, to be able to get the recovered, or I'm sorry, the removed curve. Um, and we could do a curve the same way for S, except that it's easier to just say that S is equal to in this line, just making S equal to one minus I minus R. Um, we don't have to compute S um, in any difficult way using um, the differential equations. So this little block of code right here in the for loop is the engine running um, this model. All right, I think that's enough for this video.